The Mustang IRS versus SRA debate has been going on for over two decades. Ever since the independent rear suspension debuted on the 1999 SVT Cobra, people have been polarized by its performance potential relative to the traditional solid rear axle. Online forums are filled with often contentious debates about which rear end design is best for performance driving. I generally steer clear of those debates because the people on either side don't often change their minds. So why am I stepping into this minefield now? I've been working on Mustangs long enough to have seen the shifting perceptions of the IRS and the SRA. When the IRS first came out, most Mustang owners were unimpressed by the performance. A solid rear axle swap was a popular mod. But years later, as I was getting into autocross, IRS swaps became increasingly common. Today, when people ask which design is better for autocross, the advice I hear most often is, you need an IRS to autocross your 79-04 Mustang. In 20 years, the perception of the IRS has gone from pariah to prerequisite. I meet a lot of people who are reluctant to even try autocrossing their Mustangs without an IRS but IRS assemblies are getting harder to find and much more expensive, which means many SRA Mustang owners are choosing not to attack the cones in their cars. When a debate deters people from autocrossing their Mustangs, I have to speak up. If you've watched my other videos, you've seen that I've autocrossed my upgraded SRA Mustangs and upgraded IRS Mustangs for years. I've also ridden in and driven novices stock SRA and IRS Mustangs when I instruct at autocross events. I'm not the fastest or most experienced driver in the world, but I have a lot of autocross experience with all sorts of SRA and IRS 79-04 Mustangs. In this video, I'm going to cover 5 reasons why the 79-04 Mustang IRS vs SRA for autocross debate is pointless. This is not about drag racing, open track, or street driving. For this video, I'm talking about the OEM IRS assembly found on Cobra and Cobra R Mustangs from 1999 to 2004 because that is currently the most common IRS swap. When I talk about the SRA, I'm referring to the OEM 7.5 inch or 8.8 inch rear ends that came on 1979 to 2004 Mustangs. Reason number one, the stock IRS and SRA aren't as good or as bad as their reputations suggest. People who prefer the IRS boast about its positive attributes. A stock IRS Mustang will have a limit of traction that is further out than a stock SRA Mustang. That means you can get on the throttle earlier and more aggressively in certain elements out on course, and the car will also be more composed during rapid changes of direction. The independent rear end will also maintain composure over imperfections in the surface. IRS equipped Mustangs have added weight in the rear, which improves the balance of the car. The IRS has less unsprung weight, which allows the suspension to provide faster, clearer feedback. People who dislike the IRS highlight its negative traits. Wheel hop and a vague feeling caused mainly by all the rubber bushings in the assembly make a stock IRS less capable than it could be. There have been durability issues with the half shafts and differential covers in some stock IRS assemblies. 1999 IRS assemblies had cross-axis joint design issues that resulted in a recall. And the IRS design was compromised because it had to fit into a chassis that wasn't created with an IRS in mind. People devoted to the SRA cite its benefits. It's a simple, durable design that weighs less than an IRS. And it does a good job of getting power down in a straight line. People who aren't fans of the SRA focus on its negative qualities. A stock SRA Mustang has a limit of traction that's further in than a stock IRS Mustang. The four-link has a tendency to bind when pushed too hard. 
This is commonly referred to as quadrabind. Snap oversteer is possible. The SRA is lighter than the IRS, which hurts the weight distribution of the car. And the SRA has more unsprung weight, which means the suspension feedback is slower and less specific. The biggest drawback is that the wheel's movement on one side directly affects the wheel on the other side. Stock SRA cars aren't as composed out on course. They feel nervous at the limit of traction and during rapid changes of direction. People use the positive aspects to say that one design is infinitely better than the other. In my experience, a stock IRS does have an advantage over a stock SRA on an autocross course. But that advantage is not insurmountable. As for the negative aspects, wheel hop and the vague feeling in the stock IRS are legitimate issues. But they don't make a stock IRS impossible to autocross competitively. Stock SRA Mustang drivers will have to adjust their attack due to quadrabind and the nervous feeling at the limit of traction. But those flaws don't mean stock SRA Mustangs should steer clear of autocross courses. Reason number two, the IRS and SRA are attached to the rest of the car. And the rest of the car is an extremely important factor. Many different Mustang models came with a solid rear axle over the years. Spring rates and sway bar sizes varied, and some special additions came with adjustable shocks and struts. Some stock 79 to 04 Mustangs handled much better than others. Ford also made suspension changes to the IRS-equipped Mustangs during their run to improve the handling. But the debates I see are never about specific cars. They don't include statements like, a stock 1985 SVO handles better than a stock 2001 Cobra. The debate is often too general to definitively prove anything. It's simply rear-end design versus rear-end design, and there's much more nuance than that. Reason number three, modifications matter. Both the IRS and SRA get exponentially better with the right upgrades. When either design is optimized and dialed in, you'll feel like you're driving a completely different car. You have more options to improve the SRA. A range of rear sway bar sizes, a panard bar, a watts link, a five link, and a torque arm. With both designs, you can upgrade shocks, springs, bushings, and control arms. When you bring autocross into the mix, the term prepped can mean different things depending on the rules of your SCCA category. A Mustang prepped for street category will have a lot fewer suspension mods than a Mustang prepped for cam. In my experience, the performance gap between a prepped IRS and a prepped SRA isn't as wide as most people think. Reason number four, adjustments matter. A properly adjusted autocross car will be faster than an improperly adjusted autocross car. More often than not, people aren't adjusting their suspension or tire pressure correctly. Adjusting your caster and camber, dialing out understeer and oversteer with adjustable shocks and struts, and finding your ideal air pressure settings can dramatically improve the performance of your pony. The half a second you need to catch the SRA or IRS Mustang ahead of you in the standings could be found with a simple adjustment. Reason number five, you have to drive the car. Autocross is about driving. Whether your car is bone stock or heavily modified, you have to drive better than the competition in your SCCA category. Every driving error costs you time, and every cone is a two-second penalty. The outcome isn't predetermined by your rear suspension design. It's decided by who gets the most performance out of their car. Here are some results that help prove my point. In 2017, my SRA 2000 GT was up against this mostly stock IRS 2001 Cobra in a CAM PAX class running in CAM C. 
Both cars were on 200 treadwear tires. My 2000 GT had these handling mods. Takiko HP non-adjustable front struts, Takiko Illumina adjustable rear shocks, a BBK strut tower brace, a Steeda shock tower brace, LMR standard length subframe connectors, a custom lower chassis brace added to the OEM convertible K-member brace, Steeda upper and lower control arms with poly bushings, a Steeda adjustable rear sway bar, a 35mm Steeda front sway bar with aluminum brackets and poly bushings, and poly bushings in the A-arms, strut mounts, and steering rack. It had 300 horsepower and 327 rear gears. The 2001 Cobra had these handling mods. A strut tower brace, a bolt-in four-point roll bar, H&R springs, Bilstein shocks and struts, and full-length subframe connectors. It had 320 horsepower and 327 rear gears. My 2000 GT won a local Cam Pax class championship in 2016 and was very competitive against cars with coilovers, panhard bars, and torque arms. Some people might disagree, but I'm calling it an upgraded SRA. According to many Mustang owners on the internet, my upgraded SRA should have easily beaten a mostly stock IRS Cobra. But at this event, I lost by 0.193 seconds. At this event, I won, but only by 0.105 seconds. And at this event, I was 0.077 seconds slower, which is why reason number five is really important. You have to drive the car. In 2019, I was also running in a Cam Pax class. My Cam C 2000 GT and 2004 V6 were IRS equipped and they battled this Cam T 1993 SRA Mustang. All three cars had 200 treadwear tires. My new edge cars had these handling mods. Both had Takiko Illumina front struts and D-spec rear shocks. Stifler's fit system and lower chassis brace, a Steeda rear shock tower brace, Full Tilt Boogie Racing IRS subframe and differential bushings, adjustable rear sway bar end links and IRS toe links, poly IRS control arm bushings, Steeda caster camber plates, a 35mm front sway bar with aluminum brackets, and Eibach Pro Kit 99 and 01 Cobra rear springs. My 2000 GT had BMR A arms, a BBK strut tower brace, Ford Racing C springs up front, Maximum Motorsports aluminum steering rack bushings, and Steeda Delrin front sway bar bushings. My 2004 V6 had poly A-arm and steering rack bushings, a Steeda strut tower brace, Steeda sport springs up front, and an adjustable Eibach rear sway bar. The 1993 Mustang had these handling mods. QA1 double adjustable shocks and struts, front coilovers with 300 pounds per inch springs, QA1 adjustable A-arms, a QA1 bump steer kit, JNM rear control arms with adjustable spring perches and 350 pounds per inch coilover springs in the stock location, Maximum Motorsports panhard bar and torque arm, Steeda full length subframe connectors, an Eibach 36mm front sway bar and 24mm rear sway bar. Our cars dueled at six events. I was faster at three events, he was faster at three events, but our raw times were close at every event. More proof that you have to drive the car. I'm not naive enough to think that I can single-handedly end this debate. Fortunately, there are lots of people all over the country proving that the Mustang IRS versus SRA debate is pointless when it comes to autocross but too many people are still using it as an excuse not to autocross their ponies. Both the IRS and SRA can be incredibly capable for autocross. Just don't assume the best or worst about either design, consider the rest of the car, make the right mods and adjustments, and always remember how you drive is just as important as what you drive. 
I'm always going to have solid rear axle and independent rear suspension Mustangs in my autocross stable. And I encourage every 79-04 Mustang owner to take whatever rear end they have to an autocross this season. 